do me a favor. Somebody call me, please. Anybody know where the fucking time is going? <laughs> where the fuck is it going? Friday's going to be the 15th of the fucking month already. Where the fuck is the month gone? Where has this year gone? All I remember it being fucking 4th of July and me lighting firecrackers and a fucking one of those Roman candles and it's October fucking 13th. It's great. I'm feeling good. Hope everybody's doing well at home. <laughs> fucking went to this place last night in fucking Edison called Harold's. Holy shit. I wish I was exaggerating to you motherfuckers. The sandwich is possibly nine inches fucking tall. I've never seen anything like this. Yeah, it's this fucking big. You go with six people, even the waiter will say, just order a sandwich for two. You're like, but there's six of us. He's like, trust me, just order a sandwich for two. Holy shit. I went off my Weight Watcher points. I mean, I blew the fucking system last night. If you get a chance to go to Harold's and fucking Edison, the onion rings, the fucking, listen, it's the best Jewish deli I've been to since fucking Cats. And you guys know I love motherfucking pastrami. I kept it light to a couple ounces, you know, but I had to eat a fucking onion ring and I had to get the fucking mushroom barley. You know, I'm down with the Jews from day one, Jack. They had kegel. They had all that Jew food. I was like, what the fuck? And it just wasn't. It was delicious, the fucking dessert. If you got a chance to go there, I got to tell you something, motherfuckers, that I'm really proud of. Jersey got some good-ass food. I mean, good-ass food. You know, South Jersey, holy shit. I mean, I am very, very, very fucking impressed, guys. And it's, you know me, I look to talk shit about somebody's restaurant, but, dog, they don't even give me a fucking opportunity to down here. Everything is good. Even the fucking Wawa. When Ari came down here, he was so excited that there was a Wawa. I had a $35 gift certificate in my car. I had to give it to him. He was like, oh, my God. It was like giving him a fucking, uh, you know, a, a, a fucking receipt to like what what do you call those coupons you give people like gifts to a restaurant like it was like giving him like a fucking thing to rayos or something he was so fucking excited over 35 dollars a gift you card gas. you get gas he loves the sandwiches in there like yeah. people the fucking pretzels oh my god mikey brings me the pretzels some nights i get super fucking stoned i put them in the microwave oven i put a little uh, hot mustard on those motherfuckers oh what or i you know me i'm a hillbilly I'll dip those motherfuckers in olive oil. So when I wake up in the morning, I shit nice. Da, da, da. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that, that 10 points for the whole pretzel, you eat a half of it, it's only five. You got to use your head, cocksuckers. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Who the fuck you think you're dealing with, Joey Bananas? I fucking, I'm having a hard time sleeping like three nights in a row. I didn't know what it was. And I'm like, oh, it's that I smoked that pipe. I got to bang it out with the fucking joint. Last night, I went back with the joint. I got some of that fucking laughing gas. I put some Keef in that motherfucker. I rolled that motherfucker up, and I went in the front and smoked it. Holy shit. I came downstairs. I don't even know who I talked on the phone last night. I fucking blacked out again. I'm starting to feel like that chick that died. What's her name? The singer? I got to go to rehab. I'm telling you, dog. I'm like Amy Winehouse Jr. I'm blacking out at night off a of reefer. No, nothing. Nothing else. I'm, I, I do some edibles. You know, I do like... I do the tea, which is two milligrams. I do three ABX capsules, which is 300. Sometimes I put an extra one in there for good luck. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't want to slip on the way to bed. You want to put a little fucking, a little extra 400 for good luck. I'm out of the tincture, the farm's tincture, but I got the syringes. So before I was using a syringe, the whole fucking syringe and the tea, that's a waste. That's overkill. All I got to do is I could split the syringe now into four nights. If you're looking to make that Michael Jackson tea, you could split. You get a syringe from fucking whatever farms, and I just put like maybe two tenths in there. That's it. And, guys, it's over. I, I put the tea. I make a regular cup of tea. I put an ice cube in there for it to cool off so I don't have to sit there like grandma for two hours drinking tea, sipping it. I don't need that in my life, burning my tongue and shit, burning the roof of my mouth. One day I took, because then I take the tea bags out and I suck on them for a while. Like I just suck on them like they're nuts. I put one on this side and one on this side and I just sit there watching TV just a little bit under my gum. I suck everything out of those fucking tea bags because the tincture and shit goes into the tea bags. So I drink everything out of the tea bag. 
and then I stir it up good, the tea, and I down that motherfucker. The joint is rolled before I even go upstairs to prepare the tea. You know me, dog. The joint is rolled at like 9.30. I don't want no misunderstandings. I go from the tea to the porch, and I smoke my fucking bone. Oh, my God. I'm loving it, guys. I don't need to smoke in the daytime no more. A lot of you guys threw me out of the church. If you're not high by 2 o'clock, go fuck yourself. I get it. Hey. I'm against the rules, but I'm doing my own motherfucking rules. I'm down to one fucking number a day at night. That's tremendous, guys, especially coming where I was coming from. I was smoking 82 fucking th thousand bongs a day, and that was just the bongs. Never mind the fucking hits. I hit that freeze pipe again the other night. That's not a bad. Oh, that's not a bad. When Lee told me he wasn't coughing anymore, I knew there was something in it because I remember when I lived in Colorado, I never fucking coughed, and I was in that high altitude. I got to tell you something. That fucking pipe, that great little fucking pipes. I'll give you the bong because I'm not going to use the big bong. I used the little one, the one I show them. I used the little one. That thing hits like a fucking mule. That'll kick you right the fuck up. I've never been a big bong guy. The big bongs are nice, but A, they break. They're big, and B... I've always felt that the little mules do the best job. If you get yourself an 18 incher and smaller, that little midget one I don't like. The the midget bong that's a that's a blow job. That's a diehard. But the fucking the bubbler. the bubbler, yeah, I like the big uh, the medium fucking whatever. I don't like the little. I don't mind having a bubbler, but it's got to be a little fucking bigger. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Today's guest is John Burntall. Uh, I've been friends with him since Grudge Match. He was on the church. Um, I've never been friends with a leading man before. Um, we speak all the time. You know, we got tight after grudge match, and we got tighter on the bond during the Sopranos. It was great to have him. You know, he's just a great guy to have around. He's knowledgeable as fuck. He knows everything about actor, acting, and he's just a great fucking actor. Uh, as you guys know, I'm not a good actor. I'm a mediocre actor. But I work hard, so it, I make it seem like I'm doing something. But uh, this guy's just great. He's been a great friend to me. Um, great, ha like I said, it's great having a fucking leading man as a dear friend. You could ask him questions. I'll never be a leading man, so uh, it doesn't fucking matter. I love this guy with all my heart. He's got a new movie out that he uh, sent me the other night, and he knew it, he knows my taste. I mean, we've talked about all the movies I like. He hit it right on the fucking head with this movie. I've watched this movie twice, and I'm, I was about to watch it again last night, but it was just getting too late. I was watching the Dodger-San Francisco game, so I didn't really want to fuck that up. I enjoyed it, man. This is one of those movies. I like small-time movies. I mean, I like big movies too, but the the best way I've learned about acting is by doing small production movies you know when you do a big movie like spider-man 2 people opening up the doors for you you have eight people gushing around you tucking your shirt in making sure oh you have a little hair over here shave that you do a hundred dollar a day movie or a low budget movie or a movie that the budget's not that high a lot of those people aren't on the set you gotta you gotta fucking do it all yourself so it's a big education i had a podcast yeah i was on some girl's podcast yesterday sweet girl jessica and i was explaining to her that you know, years ago, like I had been in 20 fucking things. I got 75 acting credits, guys. You know, I should know a thing of fucking two. I didn't even know. I didn't count them. The guy Chuck counted them in, uh, when he brought me up at the Q&A in uh, Eatontown and whatever. I have 75 credits. You learn shit after a fucking while. But I told Jessica yesterday on the podcast when I was doing her, when I was on there, that I did General Hospital fucking years ago. If I would have got that call for General Hospital when I moved to L.A., I would have been fine. They don't talk to you on that set. They don't say nothing. You check in, they tell you what room you're in, and that's it. There's a monitor on the wall that tells you when to go out, when to rehearse, when to come back. Then they'll bring you back out again. You don't even have. You go out there, you say the lines to a soap opera. Like, let's say I'm doing a scene with Mike, and I fuck up a line. We start the scene from the top. On a soap opera, they don't even give you that. They started from that line. Pick it up from where you felt, oh, okay, uh, Charlie, let's go. You know, that type of shit. And they rush you out of there. You're like, you're gone. Okay, that's it. I would, there was days I was getting there at 8, and I was in my car at 9.15. Like, they don't fuck around. They rap at 5. So if you're thinking about getting into acting, me and Mike were talking about this earlier, how, yeah, when you're a musician, 
we're told that you have to be a musician in a band and tour. Not really. There's other type of musicians. There's people that make millions of dollars that you don't even see. You've never even heard that makes jingles. You know how much money there is in fucking jingles? What's that one, uh, the Jeopardy jingle? Mm -hmm. That guy gets like 64000 a week. I think it's uh, one of the guys that created all those shows. Oh, really? He also created the jingles to those shows. This company, Marv something, Merv or something like that, his company is fucking huge. So just because you're not touring doesn't mean, it's like right now I'm looking for a content writer job. That's the same thing as doing comedy. You're writing. Well, who's not better? Who's better than fucking you for a content job? That's me. That's what I'm looking for. A little content writer job to describe. I have a friend that was a big time director, and one day he just quit. You know what he does? He directs the videos to how to build shit for Costco. No, for uh, in IKEA. IKEA. He's been there for 15 fucking years. Happy as a pig and shit, and he's home by five o'clock. So. Always, you know, don't give up. If you're a musician and your band's fucking up, who cares? Just create jingles and make millions of dollars and you don't get VD. <laughs> Who's better than you?